Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're continuing our series in the brand new Player's Handbook, which I still don't have a physical copy of because that comes in a couple weeks, but I do have access to it on D&D Beyond. And as such, I have got a crap ton of printouts all over my filming room here, and I'm analyzing all the mechanics of our brand new Player's Handbook. Using the printouts as my, as my uh, uh, resource, I'm going to be talking about character creation and all of the options, and right now we're covering character origins. Origins you can find right up there in Chapter 4. It covers your background as well as your species. And we're talking about backgrounds because in this edition, in, in uh, 5.24, as it's being called online, um, we are seeing uh, that backgrounds serve a major part as opposed to being kind of an afterthought because they define your ability score increase and your origin feat. So a lot has been pumped into the backgrounds. Today we're talking about the artisan. Uh, the 2014 Player's Handbook had the guild artisan as a potential background, and we're going to go over how it's changed and what the details are in just a sec. But before we do, I'd like to let you know, Relax Fantasy Review has memberships. For just a dollar a month, you can support me here on YouTube and get a couple benefits. First, you get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting folks know that you're a supporter. But also you get early access to my videos. I upload videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I upload them a day early for members only. If that interests you, you can click the join button just below the video down there next to the subscribe button. I'd love to see you in the comments with your member badges. And if it doesn't interest you, that's totally fine. Just liking the video, subscribing to the channel, these are all wonderful ways you can support me, and I really appreciate you watching my content here on YouTube. So, the artisan. The backgrounds in 2024 give you three options for your ability score increases. We're talking you get three of the six as choices, and you can choose a plus two and a plus one to two of them, or you can choose a plus one to all three, but you're locked into these three. And the artisan gets strength, dexterity, and intelligence. That's an interesting mishmash of skills. I would say that strength and intelligence are actually the more niche of the two. Intelligence is very specific to intelligence-based casters, like wizards, and most other characters will usually see it as a dump stat. So if you're playing a wizard, this can work for you. On top of that, strength is very specific to people like barbarians and fighters who want to use big, two-handed, heavy weapons. The new 2024 rules actually um, have taken a lot of the power away from heavy weapons and given a lot more to, like, lighter weapons, dual wielders, and stuff like that. So strength actually got nerfed, in a sense. It's still fine. There's nothing wrong with being a heavy weapon wielder, battle axe and shield, great sword, whatever have you. But... Truly, dexterity is still the god-tier stat, in the sense that it buffs your armor class, it buffs your skills that are usually seen as very valuable, such as stealth, and it buffs your ranged attacks, and it buffs your uh, finesse-based light weapon attacks. It's wild. Um, I'm seeing things like blade singers, you know, a wizard who also is, um, you know, using their dexterity. Or maybe rogues, because rogues like intelligence, especially if they're arcane tricksters, and dexterity is their main stat. Fighters can also get on this, and Eldritch Knights would love this. There's a, a couple different ways that this can play in. I wouldn't ever normally see someone mixing strength and dex, maybe a barbarian, because they want their strength, dex, and con all high. So, there's some stuff you can do here. It's not going to appeal to the majority of casters, because even though they like dexterity, you know, most of them use something other than intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. So I'm going to give this ability score uh, set a 7 out of 10. Good for when you are playing very specific things, but not very broad-reaching. On top of that, you get an origin feat. Uh, your background provides that. And from this one, you get the crafter feat. Crafter gives you proficiency in three tools from a list, and it's mostly those that have to do with the creation of things. Smiths, mason, 
leatherworking, carpenter, wood carver, tinker is on there, um, stuff like that. And you, so you get proficiency in three of those. Then you also get a 20% discount whenever you're buying adventuring gear, or actually when you're buying anything that isn't magical, you get 20% off. That's something that, I mean, that's cool, but I don't know how often that's going to come up, because, I mean, are potions considered magical items, or are they adventuring gear? And then, at the end of it, you also get the fast crafting ability. It says that at the end of a long rest, you can take a tool set you're proficient with, and look over a table of items. For things like the carpenter's tools, there's the ladder. For the uh, leather worker's tools, you can make a pouch. For the wood carvers, you can make a quarterstaff or a club. For the potter's tools, you can make a lamp. There's a lot of key adventuring gear that can be really handy, and basically at the end of a long rest you get to quickly make one, and it lasts until the next time you take a long rest, at which point it falls apart. So you have this like rotating piece of adventuring gear that you're just kind of making yourself. There's a lot of roleplay potential and utility potential here, but the problem is is that learning uh, tools and crafting with them is something that is largely underrated. Uh, they've definitely tried to flesh it out here, but it's still not really doing much for you outside of utility. It doesn't add to damage, it doesn't add to magic, it's very exploration-focused only, for, for the most part. I think that this kind of feat is good for a role-play, heavy exploration and puzzle-solving campaign, but that's about it. In a social uh, intrigue campaign and in a combat-heavy campaign, this feat is largely not going to help you. I'd say this feat is a 6 out of 10. It, it, it's not useless, but it's definitely down there with the only take this in very specific situations. So we're not doing too hot yet, but now we get into the skill proficiencies. You get two of them, and you get investigation and persuasion. Investigation is, in my mind, the best intelligence-based skill because it helps you deduce information about your surroundings and information that you're, you've been given. And then persuasion, for my money, is the best social skill. So you've got charisma and intelligence at their very best here. Having good persuasion helps you navigate social encounters much easier and doesn't get you quite in as much trouble as deception or intimidation. So I think these are good skills, and I give it an 8 out of 10 and a 9 out of 10, respectively. Then there is your tool proficiency. All backgrounds provide one of these, and you actually get your choice of all artisan's tools. Which is interesting, because you already got three of those. But artisan's tools opens up a little more outside the crafter feat. It's a shame you can't get, like, thieves' tools, because they're not considered artisan's tools. They're their own thing. But there's still lots of selection here, and if you wanted something... You wanted four tools from the crafter feats. Well, guess what? You're going to get the fourth one. And you get to get a set of them as well as part of the background. So you get to choose your own tool. I think that this is the sort of thing that is a little more valuable than the feat because you're not sacrificing a feat. The reason I don't like the crafter feat is because you could be getting something else. Magic Initiate, Alert... Musician. There's so many cool other feats that empower you, even Lucky. Whereas with this one, they actually are expanding because most backgrounds give you a specific tool. This one lets you pick. That's why I would give Crafter the 6 out of 10, but I give this proficiency from Artisan a 9 out of 10. I think that it actually boosts and is one of the best uh, tool options for a background, getting to pick. All in all, I think that the artisan background is okay in very specific ways. You're not going to get a whole lot out of your ability scores and feats, but you are going to get a lot out of your skill proficiency and tool proficiencies. And with the crafter feat, you are going to expand on that. So you are very much a support-based background. You're going to be using your tools a lot, which is the theme of an artisan. Someone who's worked in a workshop or in a guild or in a uh, manufacturing plant and they've really worked on their skills and that kind of stuff is going to be helpful if your DM plays into it. If you're just in a grindy campaign where you're just fighting combat after combat after combat and there's not many puzzles to solve, this one's going to fall a little flat. But for social interaction and puzzle-based D&D, 
you can actually do pretty good with this background. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 overall. I think that, yeah, it, it certainly has its place at the table, and I would not scoff at anyone who chose this background, as long as they've got a very specific build in mind for those ability scores. So yeah, I think 8 out of 10. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the join button down there, and I will see you all next time with more background reviews. Have a good one, my friends.